Modesty. Let's face it, girls, this word usually makes us cringe. It's usually associated with strict rules and regulations about the way that we dress. As I've seen, there are usually two methods that Christians have for handling the problem. First, they become overly legalistic, making rules that are so strict that it makes them difficult to follow and makes girls like us hate the concept of modesty. Otherwise, Christians often tend to turn a blind eye because they're afraid of offending someone. There have probably been several moments in your life where you have encountered a girl who is revealing more of herself than she should, but you choose to say nothing, even if it is your friend, because you're afraid of offending her. On the other hand, you have probably met women, maybe even women on this campus, who are so strict about clothing that it makes you frustrated to even think about the decency of what you're wearing. Today, I want to encourage you girls to take a different view on modesty. Because the Bible never spells out specific guidelines about how we dress, and a lot of it is cultural references, it's often neglected in regards to the topic of modesty. However, through reading the Bible, I have come to discover that modesty is more than just about what we wear. It is a lifestyle of reflecting the attitude of our hearts with our wardrobe. Instead of giving you the Christian version of the TV show, What Not to Wear, I want to tell you I want to show you three things that scripture can teach us about living a lifestyle of modesty. There are three things that we must remember. First, we must remember that we have a secret to keep safe. I'm going to be turning to several passages today, so if you want to try your best to follow along. The first passage I'm going to talk about may surprise some of you that this is even in the Bible, or surprise you that I'm going to be the one to read this out loud. But we are going to use this passage to enter the mind of men and also to understand the way that God designed our bodies. Many people would say that the reason to dress modestly is that we do not want to cause young men to stumble. And although this is very true, there are many Christian girls that get fed up with this argument. However, it really does have a good point. I'm going to be reading Proverbs 5, 18 and 19. And first I'm going to read it out of the 1984 NIV. May your fountain be blessed, and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. A loving doe, a graceful deer. May her breast satisfy you always. May you be captivated by her love. As I said earlier, some of you may be shocked that I chose to read this out loud. Even though this wording seems blunt, the Bible scholars that translated this passage were a little uncomfortable with the rawness of the original language, and so they toned it down. I'm going to read verse 19 again out of the ESV. Let her breasts fill you at all times with delight. Be intoxicated always in her love. Intoxicated. Now that is strong wording. This verse points to the fact that we have the ability to intoxicate a man with our beauty. That's pretty incredible to think that God designed us that way. We have been given a gift, one that author Dana Gresh identifies as the power of allure. Dana has published many books about sexual purity, but the most important to this discussion is her book entitled The Seeker Keeper, The Delicate Power of Modesty. Dana explains that with this power comes great responsibility and that our goal should be to save the deepest secrets of our beauty for just one man. This truth was illustrated to me by my wonderful junior high teacher, Dina Giles. Since I attended a private Christian school, Mrs. Giles taught us not only what we needed to know about the Bible, but also taught us the importance of making sure our hearts were in the right place with God. One day, when we were having a discussion about modesty with the girls in my class, she gave us a humorous way of remembering how to do it. She told us, in her southern Alabama accent, Remember, girls, as Gandalf said in The Lord of the Rings, keep it secret, keep it safe. <laughs> Although this was meant to be slightly humorous, she made a powerful point. When we make the choice to dress in the way that saves our beauty, then we are keeping a secret safe. It is a treasure that is meant for the man you will someday marry. I hope and pray that now that you understand a little more about this power, you will be able to use it wisely, because then you will be able to live out the next part of a lifestyle modesty. The second thing that we must remember is that we have a heart to yield. This is an important aspect of this topic that is not often discussed. The fact of the matter is that much of the issue with dressing modestly is the heart motivation behind the way one dresses. Many girls, maybe even some of you, do have an understanding of the power of allure, but have chosen to use it to your advantage to get attention. Or worse, I have come to observe that many Christian girls, even on this campus, are so in love with fashion and beauty 
that they often choose to turn a blind eye to the clothing that could be immodest, but really isn't that immodest. That is an issue with heart motivation, and that is something that God does care about. The next scripture I want to talk about is 1 Samuel 16.7. To give you a little background, the prophet Samuel had been sent by God to find the man that would be the next king of Israel. He goes to the town of Bethlehem and meets a man named Jesse, who has eight sons. Uh, when Samuel saw Jesse's oldest son, Eliab, Samuel thought that he had found the man that God intended to be king, for he was apparently tall and quite handsome. But God had a different plan. Verse 16, 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things that man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God eventually revealed to Samuel that he had chosen the youngest son of Jesse to be king, a ma young man who was described as ruddy or reddish in appearance and didn't really look like king material. However, Samuel obeyed and he anointed David, who became Israel's greatest king. So what does this have to do with the topic of modesty? It's the fact that the Lord cares more about where your heart is than about your outward appearance. He cares more about your heart being in line with his word than you keeping up with the latest fashion trends. Our hearts have to be open to what the scripture has to say about it. With this in mind, I want to take a look at two passages in the New Testament that discuss the concept of modesty. There is only one direct reference to the word that translates as modest in the New Testament. 1 Timothy 2, 9 and 10 talks about it in regards to behavior during proud worship. It says, I also want women to dress modestly, with decency and propriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or expensive clothing, but with good deeds, appropriate for women who profess to worship God. The word that is used for modest here can simply be translated as appropriate. Now the references here to jewelry and clothing are cultural references of the time that were believed to either be signs of wealth or signs of showiness. They were trying to impress people with their wardrobe and it would have been a significant distraction in the worship assembly. Some of you guys know that I am in love with the Disney movie Beauty and the Beast. I have always wanted a replica of her big yellow dress in my size. Just imagine what would happen if my dream came true and I was so excited about getting this beautiful ball gown that I decided to wear this large yellow puffy dress to chapel. <laughs> Can you imagine what would happen? It would be a huge distraction. People would spend more time looking at me than singing wor the worship songs or listening to the sermon. That is what Paul is explaining that our clothing should not be a distraction and should be appropriate to reflect the heart of a woman that worships God with her life. Another passage that discusses this is 1 Peter 3, 3 and 4, which I'm going to read out of the ESV. Do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair or the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothes you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. The way that God desires us to adorn ourselves is with a gentle and quiet spirit, which creates a heart that is ready to yield to him. When our hearts are ready to yield to him, we are able to remember the last part of a lifestyle modesty. The third thing we must remember is that we are cherished by the Heavenly Father. Too many girls, too many Christian girls, forget the value that they have in God's eyes. They are so desperate for the affection of a man that they will give themselves to any and everyone just to feel a sense of belonging. And that usually starts with the way they dress. We have already talked about dressing in a way that honors the God we profess to worship. But I want to ask you to consider dressing in a way that reminds you that you are cherished by the Heavenly Father. Psalm 45, 10 and 11 says, Listen, O daughter, consider and give ear. Forget your people and your father's house. The king is enthralled by your beauty. Honor him, for he is your Lord. The king is enthralled by your beauty. Other translations say that he will desire your beauty. The maker of heaven and earth thinks that you are beautiful and desires to have a relationship with you. No matter what anyone has ever said, no matter what you have done, no matter what happens, the king thinks you are beautiful and he is enthralled by you. He loved you so much that he laid down his life for you. He believes that you are a princess worth dying for. If he valued you that much, it seems fitting 
that you would honor God with what you do with your body, including how you dress. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. These verses bring home the truth that you were ransomed, and because of that, you should honor God with what you do with your body. You should dress in such a way that tells people that you are redeemed by the blood of Christ, that you have been ransomed to be his. A great example of our value to God came from a story about boxing champion Muhammad Ali. One day, while he was visiting with his daughters, he noticed that one of them was wearing revealing clothing. He told her, Hannah, everything that God has made valuable in this world is covered and hard to get to. Where do you find diamonds? Deep down in the ground, covered up and protected. Where do you find pearls? Deep down in the ocean, covered up and protected in a beautiful shell. Where do you find gold? Way down in the mine, covered over by layers and layers of rock. You have to work hard to get to them. He looked at her with serious eyes and said, Your body is sacred. You are worth far more than diamonds or pearls. And you should be covered too. All of you are most definitely worth more than diamonds or pearls. You are worth the highest price that could possibly be paid. And God desires that you reflect that value to him in the way that you dress. So what does all of this mean? Well, I guess that it means that we should strive to reflect the attitude of our hearts with our wardrobe. This is often easier said than done. As I mentioned earlier, I did not want to give you a list of do's and don'ts in regards to modesty. I believe that this needs to be a personal conviction, but I would encourage all of you to think carefully about your clothes, your modesty, and what they say about where your heart is and the God that you profess to worship. Dressing modestly may mean that you are not always going to be accepted by your girlfriends or that you may not get as much attention from the boys. But you must remember the price that Christ paid for you. You must also trust that God has an incredible plan for your life. He will bring the right man into your life in his time so that you may share the secret you have someday saved for him. This man will be attracted to you for the right reasons, not because you gave yourself away visually. You may go through times in your life when you don't feel beautiful, but you must place your trust in the one that loved you enough to die for you. You must never forget the value you have in his eyes. To finish the message today, I want to share a song that has helped me remember my value in God's eyes. It is something that I have struggled with even recently, but this song reminds me of the fact that God made me beautiful. And there's nothing about me or any one of us that's plain. He made you feel plain when he forgot your name. Well, let me tell you something, I have felt the same. I know you're in pain. Be another boy along the way God, he makes you beautiful And there's nothing about you that's plain You are a jewel, you are a treasure You are one of a kind And you shine just as bright as The stars in the sky You're a rare kind of wonder Created just right So keep your head up, no about you that's plain You tell me you're not the type The kind of girl that they like And you're a little insecure About how you look in their eyes Well, fashion will change And trends come and go every day But God only made one there's nothing about you that's plain You are a jewel, you are a treasure You are one of a kind And you shine just as bright as the stars in the sky You're a rare kind of wonder Created just right So keep your head up no matter the pain 
There's nothing about you that's plain See your mind, it is precious Though your heart may be restless And your eyes, they will see All that you're meant to be Cause your spirit is strong And your soul carries on So keep your head up no matter the pain There's nothing about you that's plain I know I've had days when I feel out of place Yeah, look at who I am, cover what I can Wish it all would change But take the makeup away And the same girl still remains She may not feel that beautiful But there's nothing about her that's plain You are a jewel, you are a treasure You are one of a kind shine just as bright as the stars in the sky you're a rare kind of wonder created just right so keep your head on no matter the pain there's nothing about you that's plain I know plain but God he knows your name let me tell you something there's nothing about you that's plain